Hello, this is Brad Tallis with NextGen Solutions, and welcome to this week's Fusion Friday. So this week's video is all about intersection curves. So let's take a look at how we can use these. So there might be situations where you need to create a complex surface like a bumper or a fairing or something like that, and you need to uh, create guide curves uh, for the loft to follow. Well, how do you create kind of like these complex curves? Well, that's where intersection curve really comes into play. So let's take a look at how we can do this. So I'm going to start with a new design, and I'm basically going to draw two different sketches, one on the front plane and one on the top plane. So let's start with the front plane, and I'm going to just draw a couple quick lines here for reference. Again, I'm not worrying too much about dimensions right now. And then I want to create a spline that kind of creates a curve right here. Now, one of my tips is, I see this a lot, people will use the spline command and click multiple points to kind of define the curve. And that's okay, but notice all of the, po the black points and also the green tangency handles that you can come in and modify. And you can see how you can, if you do that, you can potentially get wrinkles and stuff inside your spline. So keeping it as simple as possible is actually better. So check this out. I'm going to say spline, and I'm only going to select two points, the start and the end. But now I have these tangency handles, and I can come in and get pretty much the same curve that I did with multiple points. I'm only doing with two points, just by changing the tangency weight and the tangency direction, for example. So let's just do something that looks kind of like that for now. Okay, so this is our side view. Now I want to create the top view. And I want to make sure I grab the uh, information from my first view. So I'm going to rotate isometrically so you can kind of see what's going on here. But I'm going to project this point here and this point here because I want to make sure my other spline goes exactly to those points. And this time I am going to use multiple points. I'll start here, maybe put one point there, one point there, and we'll end there, like so. Now I want my spline to come in tangentially perfectly, like 90 degrees uh, to this other line here. And I can do that by controlling this tangency handle. So I'm going to go ahead and select that and say I want that handle to be horizontal or vertical. And you can see how it changed it to vertical, and now the spline is coming perfectly in at like 90 degrees. And I'll do the same thing over here. And if I need to, I could adjust the tangency weight to kind of change what that looks like if necessary. Okay, so now we have basically two lines that we're going to use. And what intersection curve does is it combines those two into a three-dimensional curve in space. To do that, we do need to create a sketch. So I'm going to start a sketch, but it really doesn't matter which plane it's on um, because it's going to be in 3D. So I'm just going to click, for example, that bottom plane. I'll just rotate it isometrically again so you can see it. And then we'll go to Create, Project, and then do Intersection Curve. So it's asking for the curve. So I'm going to go ahead and select this one here. And then it's asking for curves or faces. And I'll just select this other curve. And you can see this red line up here. So what did it do? Well, it took the shape of this curve and the shape of this curve and combined them into this new three-dimensional spline. So I'll go ahead and say OK. And we now have that new three-dimensional edge that's in space. And like I said before, if we look at it from the top, it matches perfectly with that top spline. And if we look at it from the front, it matches perfectly with that front spline. And now we could use this, for example, to do a surface, like a loft, for example. So let's just say loft, 
let's just go from that edge to that edge. And you can see it's lofting straight across. But we could use these new profiles as guide rails. So I'm going to select that and you can see how it's now lofting along that rail. And let's go ahead and select that bottom one. And we now have this surface that's going between those two um, guide rails. Okay, so what's actually happening here? I'm going to go ahead and turn off um, that body. Let's turn these sketches back on. Here's a great visual way of seeing what's happening. So I'm still in my surfacing tab. I'm just going to go ahead and say extrude and make sure chained is turned off. And I'm going to select that first profile that I drew, that first line. I'm just going to extend it out a little bit. And then I'm going to do the same thing. I'll say extrude and I'll do this other line and extrude that up a little bit. And you can see where those two planes intersected is where that new spline is. So that's basically what it's doing in the sketch. Okay. Now here's another tip. As I look at this, I can kind of see there's a little bit of a wrinkle right here because um, I'm basically going from a straight line all the way across and it's kind of changing height right here. I might want to add in some extra profiles for this to follow as it's going along. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to uh, turn off, um, I'm actually going to go before the loft like so. And I just need to create a couple planes. So I'm going to do an offset plane, maybe like um, one third of the way. And let's just do like two thirds of the way, just basically building two extra planes in here. And then I'm going to go ahead and create a sketch on that first plane. Create a sketch. I'm going to rotate isometrically so you can see what's going on. But that piece of paper, our sketch, is slicing through um, you know, this part right here. So we're going to use another intersection command. Not intersection curve, but I'm going to use intersect. So I'm going to say intersect. And when I hover over this line, you can see this red dot appear. And what it's basically doing is it's putting a point where this line intersects with our sketch where it pierces through. I'll do that again on this bottom line here. And you can see it's creating a point where it pierces through our sketch. And so now I have very exact points that I could um, you know, create, for example, a spline. Let's just go from here to here. Again, using very minimal uh, spline points, but I can add a little bit of curvature to that. And then let's do the exact same thing on this one. I'll just say create sketch. We'll rotate, we'll project, intersect. I'll click on this line here. You can see where it's intersecting. I'll click on that line. We can see where it's intersecting. And then I'll do the spline command again. and just add some curvature there. Okay, now I'm gonna go forward in time. It hasn't updated because I haven't changed my loft command, but if I edit my loft and I remove this second profile, I can now come in and say, this is profile one, this is profile two, and you can see that nice smooth transition from straight to a slight curve, and it's following our guide curves. There's profile three, and then finally there's profile four. And we now have a really nice, smooth surface that looks really, really good. Hopefully you found this video useful. If you did, all I ask is that you give the video a thumbs up and share or repost the video with others in your network. This will help spread the knowledge of Fusion out to the community. If you have any comments or ideas for future topics, please reach out to me at bradtallis at nextgensolutions.com and I look forward to seeing you on the next Fusion Friday.